Good morning guys, this is Left and Then coming to you with another video. This video is going to be entirely about alts. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what these are, or those of you that do know what these are, these are called basically alts because they are all alternative accounts. Basically what it means is you have more than what one account at a time. So most players, when they first start the game, they have their one account that they basically do everything on. A veteran player, a lot of times, will make multiple accounts. Now, I know for those of you that are younger and everything, you're like, oh, I spend so much time on like my main and everything, and it's exhausting and all, so why would I want to have alternative accounts? So this uh, whole entire video is going to be about if you're going to make alts, how would you use them? What could you go through and do with them? Like, you know, different ideas as far as like, hey, this might be something that you'll look at down the road. Or if you are a veteran player that do uh, does already have an alts, why would you set them up or why would you do certain things with them? Okay, so very first thing, right? The video series that I'm doing over a strategy guide, I created a third account. So I have my main, I have a silver alt, and then I have a strategy guide, you know, new account that uh, you're currently looking at on this screen. And so I put it up as Raven's Teacher and everything for the name. So I have Lefinen, I have Tolly, and then I have Raven's Teacher. So with this account, this is basically to where I'm trying to show people how to go from the very beginning of the game all the way through. And granted, I'm doing it in a faster manner and I'm doing it to where I'm not spending much, as much time as other people would but I'm showing you guys generally what to do with them. Now, what I'm also doing is I'm creating a third account to basically become a bank. So let me show you exactly you know, what that means. So I ended up taking the third account and I pulled it out of Kingdom 134. I did not know this up until a few days ago, but even though a kingdom is closed, if you already have an account there, you can move that account to a kingdom that is open. You cannot move a profile or account from an open kingdom to a closed kingdom, but you can do it from a closed kingdom to an open kingdom. So it's basically like a one-sided filter, basically. So at that point in everything, once I found that out, then I took my, you know, brand new account and I moved it on out of there and moved it over to Kingdom 100, which is where my other two accounts are. So currently you're looking at basically where my new account is. I put it in Soldiers of Anarchy, I think is the name of the clan or whatever. They're pretty, you know, decent and everything. They have a few people with alts in there, so it's not exactly like the fastest moving one in the world. And a lot of the players are a little bit younger and all. You could tell by like the lower might levels of some of the players in here. Plus their city levels are a little bit lower. But that's fine. It works perfectly well for the size of the account that I currently have. This third one. Now, for the, my third account, my goal is to basically get it up to a G6. As far as troops wise, and then I'm going to have it to where I'm going to develop the city up to a 45 with all the different, like, all the different, you know, um, buildings and, you know, like, as much as I possibly can without it costing me anything, basically. Because, like, every single day, my main account... And I'm not going to flip in between accounts because then you guys are going to see all my info, so, you know... And I was warned by one of the other players to just like, dude, you might not want to do that because then somebody might try and steal your account. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be bad. All right, so we're going to flip it between. Sorry. Okay, so right... Where the heck am I? Ah, ha, ha. Okay, now I'm figuring it out. Sorry, I'm much, much better on my phone as opposed to the computer on the phone it's just the way you just you know swipe it across and everything and get it that way 
going down, down, down. Oh, gosh, this is so painful. Anyways. Oh, you know what? I had tagged them. Never mind. Okay, so I have my three different accounts all in the exact same kingdom now. So, like, if I wanted to, I could go, okay, here's where Tolly is. I'm over here. And then if I want to go to Lefanen, my main, I'm over in this area. Now, granted, I move around from time to time and everything just to keep it, you know, a little bit different or whatever, but I am in this area. I think this is my city. Yep, there it is. And then my other account is basically over this side. So if you're looking at the map of the basically the kingdom, which I don't know why it is that like when you play on the you know on your phone, the map part is so much easier. When you do like the map over here, it ends up having it to where like it's harder to navigate from one area of the map to the other area of the map. Like it doesn't full screen it. And if it does full screen it, I don't know how to do that. So whatever. But anyways. So with my three different accounts and all, it's to where I basically, oh, yeah, I wanted to show you guys Tolly. There it is. Okay, so Tolly is right over here now. Okay. Now, what I'm doing with the different accounts is basically to where I'm trying to create a system to where one feeds the other. So... Right now, my main is basically I'm try. I have it at a G9 for my troops. I got my monsters at eight, soon to be nine. I got my siege at eight, and then I have my specialists at seven on the verge of eight. It's about to flip on over. So uh, the ideal thing in this game would basically be to have your main at the highest level possible. So we're going to develop it to where, like, it's going to have lots of resources. It's going to have lots of gold, silver, everything you could possibly think of. And it's also going to have troops that are massive and beat the living heck out of anything. Okay, so in order to do that, though, it takes a lot of resources, which, you know, that's why you want to have more than one account. So what I'm going to do is every single time that my guys face an ancient, so the rise of the ancient summoner or whatever. And the next one is upcoming in five hours or whatever. My main account has it to where we do four summons and pretty much I get my points between the first two summons. I can hit over a hundred million, which is the requirement for my clan. I sometimes do like 150 million. It just depends upon it and you know, like how much I'm willing to spend or what the requirements of the week are and everything. Whether or not it's like, oh, I want to get the VP from this or I'm going to go get it from something else or whatever. But the Rise of the Ancients with my clan, we go for a 70% bonus mark. So it makes it uh, like off of Toma knowledge. It makes it very, very um, fruitful, I guess would be the best way to put it. Now, Arachne is still a little bit better on VP, but we're also getting other stuff included in that. So that's the reason why Ancients is not a bad idea if you have a well-developed clan with a lot of well-developed players because they can go through and get this monster, you know, up in the hundreds. Like, I think we're at like 180 right now for the monster level. So it's really stupid massive. But what I do is... I take the silver from that that I get from it and I use that in order to pay my weekly dues to my clan. Like in my main, I have to do a hundred million a week, but because I'm also doing CP runs, I'm doing 200 mil a week. And then I'm also adding a little bit more onto that, you know, at different times, depending upon um, uh, like extra CP runs that they throw in or whatever. My alt account is a 50 million a week. And then my new account and everything, I think, I don't know if they have a like amount that they really want yet or whatever, but you know, I'll be sure to pay it or whatnot. But what I do is I use my Rise of Ancients in order to pay for my Tolly account being in this clan. I'll take the silver from that and move it on over. Now, from my main account, I'm getting like 2.5 to 3.5 billion in silver 
every single time that we go through and we get uh, we do the ancients of it. So what that allows is I'm going to spend probably about a billion of it on troops. And then I'm going to go through and spend the rest on dues. So like I send it on over to the uh, basically the city in this area that is used as a bank for the entire clan. So they have like one city that all it does is all the, you know, whenever they do CP runs and they have to pay it out to somebody from another clan, they go through and they use like whatever city it is as basically the bank for it. And I'm not going to reveal what city it is just because that would be entirely messed up because then anybody from a neighboring clan would be like, oh, I got to try and attack this. If that bubble ever drops, well, luckily enough, like they're very diligent about it. Okay, so. This is my Tolly account. This one, it's to where I'm trying to develop it to a G9. It was all uh, like, it was in Kingdom 500. I had it to where it almost got G9. It did not get there. It would have cost me like an extra $2,000 in Merc packages for Arachne. And I was just not willing to pay it. I'm sorry. So I'm trying to do it organically through the game and everything. So that's the reason why it's in an actual account right now. So, or I'm sorry, not an actual account, an actual clan right now. Because ideally what I would just do is sit it in like freaking desert area, just let the silver accrue and have it as a silver alt. So it would just accrue from the mansions. Like if you're looking at my city, for the Raven's Teacher one, this is the one that, like, it's. I'm trying to get this up to a G6. Currently, it's to where it has a mixture of eight farms, 16 mansions. So it could be functional. It can have a decent amount of troops, but then again, it gains enough silver to basically sustain itself. Now, my main has 23 farms and only one mansion. The reason for that is I get so much silver per week from basically that rise of the ancients that I have absolutely no need in order to like basically build silver through my mansions. So here's what the goal is. And this is what I would highly advise for all of you that decide to do alts. You have one account that you're trying to develop as much as possible. That's going to be your main. That one is going to be the one that you pay the most amount of attention to, to where you're constantly going through and looking at ways in order to make it better and basically have it develop. The other accounts are basically to feed it. So here's the way that you do uh, like I'm going to do it. And I think that that's actually a pretty good way. And most other people, you might want to emulate this. Take the silver that you get from your main is whatever extra you get, like, you know, if you have a Rise of the Ancients and everything, and you're going to basically send it to a profile that you'll consider as a bank. Okay, so here's what that means. I am going to take this third account, the Raven's Teacher one. Once I get it up to G6, I am going to basically develop it to where all of this will all be mansions. I'm not going to care about like farms or anything because quite frankly, I'm not even going to have really a like, you know, army to speak of because at that point I could pull it from a clan. I can have it sit someplace or whatever, or even if I decide to keep it in a clan, I might get it to where I have like, you know, four farms or something like that. Like a piddly little, like, you know, Hey, I could keep up with something, but I'm not really doing anything. But that's going to basically be a, you know, just a bank. It's going to sit there and I'm going to put vast sums of silver into it. Now, the only problem with that is whenever you're putting, you know, huge amounts of silver into it, the capacity of the warehouse. This is one thing that most of you got to pay attention to. If you go above the mark of the silver in the warehouse, it means that whenever your mansions are making their silver and you go through and you click on it, it's not adding it in to basically your total up here. You have to get it to where it dips below the amount in the warehouse in order to have it to where therefore it would allow it to add to your total. So the warehouse having a super high capacity basically helps you out. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop this city and I'm going to make it to where everything is up at 45. And then all my, because you can also go through and add this in. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze, guys. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. Anyways. In my economy section, for those of you that have uh, noticed this, it says warehouse capacity, right? I'm going to increase my warehouse capacity to the highest amount possible. So what I would basically do is, let's say that I'm not in a clan anymore, and I just have this thing sitting someplace. It is completely a bank, and it does absolutely nothing. I will take whatever kind of points that I have from battle tactics, expert battle tactics, and archaeology, actually, eh, maybe not archaeology, and I will put them all into economy and basically into the warehouse mode. Now, for that, in order to develop a city up to level 45, what I'm going to need to do is basically use my hero and basically have him fight Armageddon over and over and over again. So whenever that event comes up, my hero needs to get to level 250. Because whenever you go through and you're trying to develop your city, it's based upon your capital. And your capital needs to have it to where, like, in order to upgrade it, you need your hero. See how it says, like, right here, hero level 100? If I get my hero, Spia Togor, on up to 250, that allows it to where I'd be able to go for G9 which also allows me to where I would uh, be able to go through and get all of my uh, buildings on up to level 45. I don't have to do G9 in order to be able to level up all my buildings. At least I am 99% sure. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but I am 99% sure. All I have to do is get my hero up and then I could develop my entire city. So my plan is to use Sviatogor, which is the best as far as going through and just attacking the crap out of Armageddon. He gets that 50% bonus and everything. Any type of armor that I get, pile it onto him and have it to where I compl uh, become completely 100% hero acceleration minded. That's it. And in the process and everything, get the tactics to where they, I'll use 100 points in order to get this warehouse capacity all the way up. I could go through and add in the silver production in the city. Although if it's a bank, hopefully my amount of silver that I'm getting would have it to where I'd be flush, like a few billion or many, many billion that would basically be sitting in this city. Now, it would be to where what I would do is like, my main, I would use whatever I need in order to basically do my function. Because remember, guys, whenever you send resources from one thing to another thing, 20% of it is lost in taxes. So I can have 200 million that I would send on over to here, and I would only have it to where 160 million would basically make its way into this part up here. Now, here's the problem. Let's say, for instance, that I take that 200 million and I move it over here and it becomes 160 million. And then I'm like, hey, a week later, I need that silver back. Because whenever you're fighting somebody else in order to get your CP level up, your conquest points, you're going to have it to where you want your city to be emptied out, where you have no silver in it. Like, building resources going bye-bye is not exactly a really horrible thing because if you're already at a level 45 for your main, it's like, eh, so, uh, heck, what? Doesn't matter. It's the silver that most people want to go through and steal from you in order to go through and get it to where they could buy Merc, uh, Mercs through the Merc Exchange or whatever. So I need to basically have it to where, like, if I send silver from my main over to here... That means that I'm not trying to send it back because that 200 million becomes 160 million, which therefore will get down to 128 million. So I will be losing 72 million 
each time that I do transfer over, transfer back, if I'm doing 200 million. That's a huge amount of uh, like, you know, silver. That's almost basic or that's a little bit, a little bit over a third. I'm losing 36 percent, I think. So needless to say, the bank is a good idea in order to basically store the stuff. But if you're going to have it to where you transfer it over and transfer it back, then you're going to lose something out of it. So the idea behind of it is to have it to where like, hey, you're going to hold on to this. If I need it back, I need it back and everything. I'm going to lose a little bit in the process. But in the overall grand scheme of things, you'd much rather lose a little bit than have it to where you're getting attacked by other people and getting it to where you lose a lot. Like one time on my main, I lost 1.6 billion in silver off of one attack from somebody. If you have it to where the heroes and the captains are high enough and their carrying capacity is enough and they have it to where they max out their carrying capacity under tactics. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we go to tactics and we go to expert battle tactics. It's somewhere in here. Mountain melee. Da, 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 da. Health. I'm trying to remember where exactly it's at. Yeah, somewhere in here. Can't remember. But anyways, if you improve it on there, and then you also can improve it on the uh, research for the guardsmen or whatever. That I know where it's at. Let's say we're going with this. Guardsman carrying capacity. And then as you go along, it also puts it off to the side sometimes, like guardsman carrying capacity. For people that are higher level in the game, like, let me show you again. Guardsman carrying capacity six. Guardsman carrying capacity seven. Guys that are, or like, I'm sorry, people, because it's also females too. People that have it to where their armies are a super high level, their guardsman carrying capacity is so freaking high that they are basically whooping the dog crap out of you. And they're also stealing all of your stuff at the exact same time. So by doing that and everything, they can go through and steal whatever you have in this area, aside from whatever is going to be protecting, because the warehouse protects a certain amount. Like, oh, I'll still have 2.5 million afterwards. Yay. But it, like, I mean, granted, this warehouse is not fully all the way up. But still, if I had 1.6 billion and I have it to where I'm only going to be able to keep 2.5 million, that's a huge amount that like, you know, you're getting robbed away for whenever you go on a CP run or your shield of peace accidentally drops or a whole bunch of other different things. So ideally what you do is whatever you're getting in, like this 12.6 million, I would spend it and then I would have it to where I would still have like extra resources that would sit off to the side, you know, all this silver or whatever. Now granted, this is low because this is a beginner level alternative account and I haven't been in, you know, really great clans or whatever. But on my main, I have like 6 billion put away. Compared to what I would like it to be, I could spend six billion in, you know, like a few days. It's not that hard. You get it to where a Merc Exchange and you go all the way down the list, and then you have it to where you're doing CP runs or you're going it to where you're, you know, exchanging with other people like CP hits, then it goes super, super quick. So needless to say, but that's like, you know, good for uh like that's good for development, but it's going to knock out a huge amount of your reserves. So what you want to do is, and this is what I've been trying to get to, and I apologize, I'm word vomiting out the whole entire, you know, butt crack. Have it to where you establish your main, which is going to be farm centric. 23 farms is a great way to go. And then have it to where you have a silver alt which would be 23 mansions. So on my silver alt right now, I only have four farms. And once I'm done developing that one up to a G9, I'll probably have it to where I'll back that down 
Either that or I'll basically put it into like an easier level clan. I mean, I'm not going to get as much silver from other people, but I'll still be getting it to where like I'll be getting something out of it. And then I could go through and just develop the living heck out of it. Like my silver alt is making 2.4 million per hour, which therefore, if you think about it, like do the math behind it. I think that's like uh, 58 mil a day. And then you take that 58 million and, you know, per week, you're basically talking like, eh, shoot, my math is going to hell. Like 410 million a week. 410 million a week and everything like that is a nice way to basically augment your main. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this one as a bank that will hold on to whatever kind of silver I get. Either that or it'll have it to where like, I'll basically take the silver from here, send it on over to my main, and then I can also have it to where, like, you know, I'll be using that as CP or, uh, like, for CP runs. So the best way to do this, and what I highly advise for everybody, you have at least one account that is your silver alt. All they do is produce silver. You have one account for your bank, and then you have one account for your fighting. Now, if you would like to do more and everything, you could do like two, three, four silver alts, one main for fighting, and then one for basically your bank. You have three different types of uh, accounts. Bank, main, and silver alt. Those are the three different ones that you might want to have. So my plan, because of the fact that they are all in the exact same kingdom now, is to get to where I can also, my silver ult is getting G9 troops within the next few months. So think of it this way, right? Here's another idea. Let me go through and try and show you. Now granted, I can't remember exactly where it's at, so I'm gonna try my best with this. But let's see. Oh, you know what? It's much easier just to do this. Duh. Sorry, guys, my brain is not working this morning. All right, so this is right now FOC Bastards. Very nice clan, blah, blah, blah. Now, Grant, you know, I'm not saying that other clans are bad or anything, but yeah, there's some better than others. This is not the best in the world, but they are pretty darn good. Okay, so with the way that they have it, all these basically are, you know, regular fighting mains. They have some, like this one down here, that is basically a shell of a city. This one, Magnus, whatever. Now, what those cities do is basically you can send your troops there and then an enemy can attack it. And then this way you can go through and get CP out of it. Now, a lot of times what you, know, you have is clans that are like larger in the game, they will create shell cities to where they're basically an alternative account that all that, you know, city basically does is get attacked over and over and over again. And now granted, they do it in different areas of the map. And I'm not going to reveal exactly where, you know, this clan goes through and puts their shell cities or whatnot. But it's basically a pre-ranged area that the only thing that happens is you'll see like, let's say for instance that this was an actual city. You'll have a portal here, a portal here, and then you have it to where, like, they send in their troops from, like, this clan. It's one of their cities, and then an enemy clan sends in theirs, and then you basically have it to where you fight right there. And all it is is basically a way to exchange conquest points and have it to where, like, you know, you you basically you pay one, clan, uh, one player from another clan in order to go through and die, and you're basically replacing their troops, which is usually just guardsmen, and then the other clan is going through and using a mixture of certain types in order to get as many conquest points as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically develop a like an area or whatever, or like probably a city, and I'm going to try and have it to where like it might be you know, like my silver alt, it might, I might put it in the exact same clan as a silver alt, 
and then have it to where my main will go through and attack that city. And then my silver ult will be the one that basically sends the troops in in order to go have them slaughtered. So what I'm doing is basically I'm going to use the fact that I have a G9. And I'm not going to be able to show you it because then I'd have to transfer in between. And I don't want to have you guys see all my info, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to use Tolly, which is a about to be G9 level troops. I'm going to have it to where they get the crap beat out of them by Lefanen, my main, over and over and over again, so that this way Lefanen gains conquest points. This one has the silver ult, and because of the fact that it has so much silver that it's constantly producing, I can go through and use this in order to create troops that are going to die, and then Lefanen will get the CP out of it, so that this way I can have Specialist 9. I can have my Army Modernization all the way up. I can have my Monster Boost all the way up. You guys get the idea? So basically, I got this one already up to G8, almost G9. If I get it up to G9, Lefanen can go through and slaughter them and get max level Conquest points. And that would therefore, Tolly would be paying for it with the uh, silver that Tolly creates because it is a silver ult. So no matter what, what I'm going to end up doing is this will be my main. This will be my silver ult that because the troop levels are astonishingly high compared to what most other people would do with the silver ult. I can go through and therefore develop this to where it will be my CP exchange. I don't need to ask other players. I don't need to go through in pre-rage times or anything else like that. I can just have it to where Lefanen is going to beat the crap out of Tolly, And because Tolly will be a silver alt, it's also going to have a great amount of silver in it. But I will use another city as basically an area to go through and beat the crap out of. Raven's Teacher will basically be my bank. Either that or I'll make it be the city that basically is going to get the crap beat out of it because I'm not going to care about the walls anyway, so I'll just keep the walls at one. Now, if I have it to where I'm smart, I would probably make a fourth account and make that basically my beat the crap out of city. Like, this would be my main, this would be my bank, this would be my silver alt that would basically produce enough silver in order to make it to where I can fund troops that Lefanen could beat the crap out of, and then I'd have another city if I'm trying to do it all by myself. Like, a lot of clans, if you have it on a higher level, you can have it to where there's a city that they'll basically be like, you know, hey, send your troops here and everything, and you could go through and use that as fighting it out and all this other kind of stuff. But you can only do, I think it's like 10 hits on that city before the amount of conquest points basically drops. I don't know what the heck the rule is, but whatever. So the idea behind the different cities is to have it to where like I could develop my main as much as possible. This would basically go through and produce silver, even though like Lefanen's getting a ton of silver from the um, Rise of the Ancients and everything. I could have it to where Tolly would still be producing, but the main function behind Tolly would basically be to sense or to use silver to build troops that therefore would get destroyed by Lefanen to give him more conquest points. Raven's teacher would be if I have extra silver that I want to stash away because when Lefanen is going through and fighting Tolly's troops, then I'm probably going to be losing basically, you know, my bubble in the process. And I don't want to keep silver around that. Therefore people would want to go through and steal. So I would need to send the silver somewhere. Or I could just have it to where Lefanen sends the uh, silver to Tolly. Tolly would therefore send the troops, you know, by reinforcement to that other city. But then I would need to have Tolly have a city that would actually be in the exact same clan. That would be basically my fourth city. Or it would be to where that clan does have a city that they don't mind donating as far as the intermediary or whatever. I know that's a lot of information, guys. I know for those of you that are like alts, holy crap, you know, do I have the time and everything? 
it's all about like finding a clan that doesn't mind you having it to where you're distracted a little bit, you know, by, hey guys, like my current clan that I'm in, there's some alts in here already, like the leader or whatever I'll show. I don't think that they'll mind this. Uh, da -da -da. Nantrius 2. Who dares wins? Who dares wins 4? Who dare wins 3? Like, you get the idea, right? So they do have, like, alternative accounts that they are going to, you know, be putting into this city. And you can tell because some of them, like, don't even have it bubbled or whatever. Well, not that's new players that just don't know better or it's just players that hey, they're alts, and they don't care as far as what exactly happens with them. As they get silver, they ship it on out or whatever, or, you know, you get the idea. So that is my plan as far as alts. That is what I would highly advise to you guys. Have a main that is your main battle one. Have a silver alt that would therefore go through and produce silver that would help out your main. I'm in a special case because of the fact that my uh, silver alt is powerful enough in order to go through and have it to where they would have G9 troops that I could beat the crap out of and they could produce the silver in order to fund it to where I don't have to pay other players in order to try and get CP. And then I'd have a third account for my bank and I would advise that anybody that's basically playing this also go through and have a bank. Like if you have it to where you want to have that as a silver alt, but it would just have it to where it would have sometimes ridiculous amounts of silver inside of it. That's fine. Just make sure that your warehouse capacity is all the way the heck up. And you can do that through your tactics uh, under economy. And then you can also have it to where you try and basically max this out. It's different ways in order to basically do that. That is alts. That is all the ideas behind it as far as what you can do with it. I hope you guys actually learned something out of it. Um, if you did, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. We're actually getting some good traction. I greatly appreciate it. And you guys, uh, if you want to go through and comment or whatever, you can send a message to Raven's Teacher, which is now in Kingdom 100. You can send it to Lefinan. L-E-F-I-N-A-N, -E which is in Kingdom 100, or Tolly, T-O-L-I, which is also in Kingdom 100. Um, Tolly is in the bottom left-hand corner. Lefinan is in the very bottom center. And then uh, Raven's Teacher is in, like, the... That's hard to describe. I could show you my coordinates, actually. That'd be better. Yeah. So if you want to go through and contact me, these are the three different ways to do it. I check my game messages a heck of a lot more than I check my videos, uh, comments, and everything. So I do apologize. Um, but these are the three different accounts that you can go through and message. And then this way you can easily get a hold of me at any time. A lot of times, like, people go through and message me, and then I'll be like, you know, hey, if you have a lot of questions, like some of them have then it will be like, hey, let's just talk on the phone and everything, and I can go through and walk you through it. That's an easy way for me to do it. So message me any of these three ways. Other than that, you guys have a good day. Hopefully you learned something, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.